come barreling towards a fast right hander. You turn in, let off the throttle, and then seemingly out of your control, the rear end pirouettes around and you end up in the gravel trap, putting thousands of chips into your lovely new paint job. We've all been there, and in the business of sim racing, this is what we call snap oversteer. Now you might not know exactly what that means, but don't worry because in this video, I'm going to be telling you what snap oversteer is, how you can prevent it, and if you're brave enough, how you can use it to go faster. Oh no, that's grass. That is grass. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Christ's sake. I'm probably not qualified to make this video. So what is snap oversteer exactly? And no, it isn't oversteer that makes you snap, although that would be an appropriate definition. Snap or lift off oversteer is a terrifying thing your car does when you go into a corner way too fast and, believe it or not, lift off the throttle or hit the brake pedal. Both of these actions have the same effect, heating your car into a concrete wall most of the time. This causes the weight of the car to suddenly be thrown forward towards the front axle, and the rear tyres are lifted off the tarmac slightly, meaning they have less traction. The result is oversteer, and a lot of it. Especially in mid-engines cars like the Mr. 2, in which the centre of mass is already set more rearwards, making the car even more tail happy. As the age old saying goes, the prevention is better than the cure, so I'm going to give you three different ways you can totally prevent snap oversteer. Again, I'm not qualified for this. Unless you're a bit of a mad lad, of course, and you want to actually use snap oversteer to go faster, but more on that a little bit later. The easiest way to prevent snap oversteer is, of course, to simply drive the car properly. Any half decent driver will tell you that smooth is fast. You almost want to coax the car into doing things, rather than forcing it to. So instead of going into a corner way too fast, violently braking and letting off the throttle as quickly as possible, instead try braking in a straight line, turn in and then smoothly get back on the throttle. But of course this probably isn't the fastest way around every single track. Sometimes, especially on corners where snap oversteer is prevalent, it pays dividends to stay on the throttle, and this is what we call blending. Blending is the act of modulating the throttle throughout a corner. Not only does this make us faster through the turn, but it also keeps the weight of the car balanced between all four tyres, which, if done smoothly and correctly, should totally negate snap oversteer. But here is the easiest method of preventing snap oversteer, and it happens before you even leave the pits. These are just some setup changes that should pretty much stop all snap oversteer, such as reducing the rear ride height, softening the rear suspension, adding more negative camber or toe at the rear, using a stiffer front sway bar, or piling on the downforce. Now we've discovered exactly what snap oversteer is and how to prevent it, let's see how we can use it to our advantage. Like all the great driving techniques, the one I'm going to be covering today was birth in rally. Steering isn't as effective on gravel than it is on tarmac because the loose surface makes it incredibly hard for the tyres to find grip to redirect the car, and the result is more often than not massive massive understeer no <laughs> so what did rally drivers do to combat this well they started steering the cars using the pedals I, I know it sounds stupid but it's true i mean sure they still turn the steering wheel but again that steering action is just to coax the car into the turn whilst the bulk of the redirection is done with a throttle and brake. These drivers would intentionally induce snap or lift off oversteer in order to rotate their car around the turn. They would then get back on the throttle to shift the weight back to the rear tyres and straighten the car up, or continue in an epic power slide around the corner. And we can actually use the same technique on tarmac, albeit with a lot less leeway on the grey stuff. Let me show you how it's done. I'm going to give you a scenario which will show you all you need to know of utilizing lift off oversteer in pretty much any situation. Take this corner for instance. It's seemingly a corner that requires constant throttle. However, depending on the car, or if we're going particularly fast, the car may indeed start to understeer, making us wash out wide, and once again getting beached in that goddamn gravel. But with the technique I'm about to show you, we can actually totally negate the understeer and carry on at almost full momentum. So what can we do? Well, for not much time lost, we can quickly but 
carefully let off the throttle. This will shift the weight to the front tyres and stop the understeer, whilst also rotating the rear of the car around the turn. Then all you have to do is get back on the throttle. The rear tyres will speed back up to match the speed of the car and you can accelerate away. But listen up, because this part is pretty important. Doing this technique, you shouldn't need to counter steer at all. If the car enters oversteer, you've been way too aggressive with the throttle and either let off too fast or for too long, allowing the weight of the car to be transferred all the way forward. Don't say I didn't warn you, but do you want to know what else I'm going to warn you about? This video in which I check out a 20 year old racing game that is still better than most others today. Click on this video to find out more.